this video, we'll add the ability to jump to our platformer game with Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Lilder here from CodeMe.com, and in the last video, we added gravity to our game. In this video, we want to give the ability for our Aspen player to jump. So jumping is absolutely fundamental to any sort of platforming game, and it's actually not that difficult. We should be able to knock this out in just a few minutes. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've got the code from the last video on the playlist. I've just renamed it Aspen underscore platform 5.py. It was Aspen underscore platform 4.py in the last video. And what do we want to do here? So let's come down here and we want to jump. So let's come to our player class, our Aspen class. And here we have our kinematic constants. We need a fourth kinematic constant here. We need a speed to jump. So let's go self dot and let's call this vertical underscore jump underscore speed, something like that, or maybe just jump speed. And we'll keep it, we're going horizontal and vertical. Jumping is up and down, so we'll call it vertical jump speed. So we wanna set this to some number. And I'm just gonna arbitrarily say 15. We can play around with this number and we will in a bit to see what that does. But this is basically going to determine how high we can jump. Okay, so we've got this. Now, we're also going to need some sort of jump function. So let's just define our jump function now and pass in self. And for now, I don't know, let's just print jump <laughs> just to see if this is working. And this is in our Aspen class. So we need to pick a key on our keyboard to designate as the jump key. So I think the space bar is probably the the thing to use for that. So every time we hit the space bar, we want to jump. So let's come down here to our game loop. And here we have some events going here. We're, we're checking to see if they quit or not. And here let's, uh, you know, let's just jump. So let's go if event type equals, this is going to be a pie game dot key down event. So if we're pressing some key down, right, then we need to see which key we're pressing. So let's go if event dot key equals pi game dot k underscore space so that's the keyboard underscore space then we want to call our jump function so that's in our aspen dot jump and this jump function we just created and it will print now this is aspen because remember when we're initializing our aspen right here we called that aspen right this calls the aspen player class this kicks off all the player stuff all the aspen stuff so we can say aspen.jump, which will come up here and in our Aspen class, fire this jump function. So let's go ahead and save this and just see what we've got. So let's head up back over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash games directory. My virtual environment is turned on and let's run in Python aspen underscore platform 5.py. And here we have her. If we come down here, now I'm going to hit my space bar. Boom. One, two, three. Hit it three times. Nothing happened. But here we see jump, jump, jump. So, okay, it seems to be working. So now we just need to make Aspen actually jump. Let's come up to our jump function. And we really kind of only want to jump when Aspen is on grass, right? If she's on water, we don't want to be able to jump on water. She's going to fall into the water and die or whatever. And if she's on dirt that's underneath, well, she can't be on dirt unless she sort of jumps from underneath it. And we'll factor in that in a minute. Basically, we just want her to be able to jump when she's on the grass. So. So here we need to determine if she's touching the grass. So that's sprite collide. We've done that before. So let's go if pygame dot sprite dot sprite collide. And we want to pass in self. And now what are we checking to collide into? Well, that's just going to be self dot grass underscore tiles. And we'll set this to false because again, when we touch the grass, we don't want to destroy it. True would be to destroy the grass. We just want to touch it. So. We won't destroy it, so we'll set that to false. So here, we need to do something. What do we want to do? Well, we've always got our velocity, right? Right here, that's sort of our, our movement. Our position is our position, but movement is velocity, and acceleration is a change in velocity. So we want to change our velocity. So let's go self.velocity. And we don't want to change the velocity of moving left and right. 
jumping is an up and down thing. So that's the velocity of y, right? So we want to set that equal to whatever our self dot vertical jump speed is, right? Vertical jump speed is 15. That would sort of push us down, right? We want to go up. So that would be the opposite of that, which is negative one times our vertical jump speed. And let me just sort of comment jumping up. So negative kind of counterintuitive up would be negative, but that's how it is. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this and see what we got Run the sky again. And if I could, I could fall and if I hit my space button, boom, we go up and we kind of come, fall back down. And why are we coming back down? Well, remember we have gravity and gravity is always sort of pushing. So we're going up 15, but it's pushing down 0.5. And as it keeps pushing down 0.5, that 15 is going down to zero and then it's still 0.5. So it goes negative 0.5, negative one, negative 1 1.5, and it pushes us back down to earth. So, okay, that looks pretty good. Let's play around with this. So we can kind of do this. We can jump over here. Woo. Oh, all the way. Now, check this out. You might notice as soon as we kind of touch the ground of the dirt, it pops us right back up. It like locks us back up to the green. And that's not great. We really kind of don't want that, right? How do we fix that? Well, come to our update function and let's look in our collisions. Here, we're checking if we're touching the grass, right? If we touch the grass, we're setting our position to the top of that grass. So what's happening is we're coming up from the bottom, hitting the dirt, and we're hitting the bottom of the grass and then it's boom, zoom, like popping up to the top because right here, Anytime we touch grass, even the bottom of grass, it sets our position to the top of that grass. It's like boom, pulling us up. And, you know, we don't really want that. So let's say if touched platform, we only want to adjust our position on the way down, not up. So if we're moving down, we want this stuff to happen, right? We want to lock it to the ground if we're moving down because we don't want to fall through. But if we're moving up, we don't want this to happen. So let's let's do some logic here. So let's go if self dot velocity is greater than zero, then we can do all this stuff. Tab this in, and that might just do it. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here. Run this guy again. Ah, error. It's not self dot velocity. It's self dot velocity of y, right? So this is up and down. So this needs to be dot y. Okay. All righty. Let's try this again. So now, as I start to go over and fall, and I can pull my back self back over, you'll notice it kind of pulls me back up because we're moving down, and that's what we want. On the other hand, if we come down here and I do that, it only pulls me up at the end. It's not locking me. Well, no, that still did. Hold on. No, my, my ears are touching. It's pulling back up, but it's, it's doing it much better now. So this, this I can live with. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now we can come up here. Let's see. Now let's play with our vertical jump speed, right? So if we set our vertical jump speed to five and save this, let's try this again. You see, we're barely getting off the ground, right? So the lower this is, obviously, the lower we can jump. On the other hand, if we change this to like, I don't know, 50 or something, is our screen even big enough to handle a jump of 50? <laughs> oh, I went way up there. Yep, eventually came back down. <laughs> Too high. Too high. So I don't know, let's try 25 or something. Save this. Over here, run this guy. Oh, it's still pretty high. <laughs> Too much. I think 15 or maybe even 10. Probably great for this game. Let's try 10. Let's just see. 10 might be too little. I'm just playing right now, obviously. This is fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's that just barely, ah, barely gets us up. So we're going to need a good solid 15 at least for our game here. But play around with this. For whatever game you're building, how hard you make it or how easy you make it is going to have 
a lot to do with this vertical jump speed and also a lot to do with our friction and our gravity. So you're going to play with all three of these numbers always to get whatever sort of game you want, but uh, very simple. And that's all there is to it. We are coming right along with this game. We still need to do a few things. We need to factor in what happens when Aspen falls into the water. We also, I think, should make a sort of wrap around. So if she goes off the screen one way, she comes back around the other way. I think that'd be good. We'll probably look at that. Probably maybe both of those things in the next video. And it should be fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 200,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodingMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.